Uh, I guess we're all doing better than Diddy. Yeah. <laughs> oh, what a week. Uh, <laughs> all right, if you, if you don't know, I'll try to bring you up to speed very quickly. Uh, basically, Diddy has been the devil for decades. And... <laughs> It's really only this year that everything's sort of coming to roost, right? It, it, you know, it sort of started with a lawsuit brought by his ex-girlfriend, uh, Cassie. And, you know, in, in the lawsuit is detailing horrific things. You will not, like, you, you will feel sick if you read the lawsuit. And Diddy said it was all a lie. Just nothing but disgusting lies about his character. And he sailed the lawsuit the next day. <laughs> about you, but I've never been lied on so hard that I was like, you better stop lying about me. I will pay you as much as you want for you to stop telling me all the stuff I, I uh, supposedly did. I want to make sure that this is, how much does the check need to be? It, doesn't, it won't be an escrow. It'll be in a check form in the morning, but I will pay you as much as it takes for you to stop lying before people start looking into what you said because everybody else is saying it. Well, no, it's just, it's, it's crazy. And even more recently, more allegations and, and more investigations have been going into Diddy being an you know, alleged. <laughs> Legally, you have to say it. Uh, <laughs> being an alleged sex trafficker and everything to the point where, you know, this week, the FBI raided all of his houses all of his houses at once, just to make sure, every single one, at the same time, make sure he wasn't house hopping or anything, just go on everywhere. They grabbed all the homes and the homies and they pulled everybody outside. And it was truly astounding to watch because if you've ever watched, like I, I, I watch a lot of news, so I remember like the Roger Stone raid. Anytime the FBI or, or Homeland Security does a raid, it's a, it's a weird hierarchy that you notice because They'll show up to do the raid, right? So FBI or Homeland Security, they'll be fitted up, right? Top to bottom, they got the AR-15, they got the vest on, full body armor, they got the boots, they got the helmet. And then sometimes they actually have backup, backup the SWAT. So then SWAT is also there dressed like SWAT and we know what SWAT is dressed like. And then it will just be the regular police. <laughs> And it kind of made me feel bad for the local police because, like, imagine you show up to work and all, all your coworkers look like Call of Duty that day. <laughs> and you just have to show up with your chest. That's, that's unfair to them. Like, if I was a cop, I'd be like, y'all ain't got any extra ARs in the trunk or anything. I can't hold something. Y'all just showed up all prepared. Y'all said he dangerous. You know what? I'm, I'm going to wait next to the car. That's what I'm going to do. Y'all, this, this is bull. I'm not doing it. Truly, watch any FBI raid. All the local police are next to the car in the street. They're like, no, nah, they're going to get them. They're going to get them. <laughs> oh, you better watch out because they coming. Oh. <laughs> but yeah, they raided all that dude's houses at one time, pulled people out, were, were like, you know, interrogated people, were trying to look for stuff in the houses. And meanwhile, a lot of people had been waiting on Diddy's downfall for a long time, so they track his movements. And I want to take a quick second, because a lot of people, as this is mainly like a, a black thing knowing about Diddy. Like, it feels like the world didn't know. But black people, we knew. We were like... No. <laughs> Something happening with him. That seems all. I don't know if I. I don't know if I love that either. That's that's just been us for like two decades with Diddy just being like, did y'all see? Yeah. You know I mean? And so a lot of other people are catching up. So then there are things when anything like this comes out. There are things where. People ask, like, why is everybody talking about it now, coming forward now, stuff like that. I want to be clear. Diddy is not like a, like a Harvey Weinstein in that way, right? Because with Harvey Weinstein, everyone started coming forward, and then people were like, why didn't y'all say something sooner? Look at him. <laughs> we would have believed you. 
Like, we don't do a good enough job of believing women, but with Harvey, I'd be like, hmm. <laughs> Whatever y'all say he did, he did. That's... I can just see it from his build that he did whatever. But Diddy is a very different thing. Diddy, Diddy is scary. A lot of people are scared of Diddy. And you want to know one of the reasons why people are scared of Diddy? Because of where he comes from. There's gangsters, then there's gangsters. Okay? Diddy's dad has ties to Frank Lucas. If you don't know Frank Lucas, Frank Lucas is who Denzel played in American Gangster. That's who Diddy's dad hung out with. That's who Diddy's dad did business with. So when you ever rewatch American Gangster and you see that scene when Frank Lucas, Denzel, stands up and in the middle, broad daylight, middle of the sidewalk, a dude disrespects him and he pulls out a gun and he shoots him in the head and kills him in front of everybody because he knows nobody will say anything. That's who Diddy's dad ran with, right? That's who taught him his, like, ABCs and stuff. <laughs> you know what I mean? When you see that scene, that's a bone-chilling scene because it happened. That happened. He did that. He killed someone broad daylight because he knew no one around would say anything, right? So when you see that scene and you see Denzel do that, just know that one of the extras in the background, at least one of those kids, is Diddy. That's... <laughs> Terrific, you know? And that's why people have been so scared of him, because we, we know that he just moves differently, you know what I mean? And a lot of people have been waiting on his downfall for a long time, so when the FBI was raiding, people were like, where is Diddy? And you know how these kids are now? They're very smart. They can track anything. They track Diddy's plane. And so while the FBI is raiding all of his homes at one time, Diddy's plane is leaving America. <laughs> And I don't mean getting fueled up. I mean, the plane is over just blue. That's the ocean. That's the plane is gone, right? And the plane is uh, headed for Antigua. Now, Antigua is still extradite. So a lot of people are like, why would he be going over to Antigua? Then other people said, hey, maybe he's landing in Antigua because everybody knows that's his plane. He's going to land in Antigua. He's going to get on a friend's smaller plane. And he's going to go to a country that doesn't extradite like Bali, right? So then that plane lands in Antigua. It comes right back. When it lands, turns out Diddy was never on the plane. He was in Miami the whole time. <laughs> this man is a terrible rapper and an incredible villain. I have been... <laughs> I've been thrown for a loop consistently with him. Like, this man should be in a James Bond movie. <laughs> oh. A lot of people are just waking up to how Diddy is, you know? We knew. You know how you know that we knew? Diddy's the only black billionaire we didn't root for. <laughs> it's a very big deal when you get a black billionaire. We're always like, oh, yeah, oh, we did, oh, we did it. You know, I remember when that guy, you know that, that, that guy that gave the commencement speech at Morehouse, and at the end of the speech, he said he was going to pay for all the kids' student loans? That moment went viral. It was crazy. Kids were crying and everything, jumping up, screaming. I looked it up. I found the guy. His name was Robert Smith. Turns out he's a billionaire. He didn't give me any money, but I was at home like, we got another one. <laughs> Diddy became a billionaire. We were like, good for you. I don't know about y'all, but I, I love, absolutely hate, love when home drama spills out into the world. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I don't wa watch a lot of reality television, so I love when a real life couple just can't take it anymore. <laughs> yeah, you know I mean, like they have to, they have to have it out, and they have to have it out now, and now is here, and here is where I am. <laughs> So I get a free show. <laughs> you know? And I think it happens a lot in New York City because we don't have space. <laughs> like, y'all have real homes here. Y'all can be like, we will discuss this later. Much. <laughs>
In New York, we don't have that. We're like, I want to argue in private at home, but home don't have no elbow room. I want to argue where I can move a little bit because I am, I, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm passionate with my movements now. If I'm arguing at home, what time I really was, what time I was arguing at home, and I went, I went like this to be like, oh, wait, 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 you know, just like to hold it up, and then I hit my elbow, and there's no way to look right when you just stand there like. <laughs> you know, so sometimes couples just have to, they have to have it out in that moment, you know? And um, I was walking. Dude, I try to do this at least once a week. I was, I, was, I was on a walk with no AirPods in, right? Just really, like, be around in the world, you know? And I think it's an important thing to do because it just, it opens you up to what's happening around you. And I would have missed this had I had my AirPods in. I was walking, and as I'm walking, I see this dude bust out of the door of his, of his house, right? He's running down the stoop of his brownstone, no shirt on, anything, looking terrified, like, what? <laughs> and so I turn and I see what I can only imagine is his girlfriend or wife running behind him. And I was like, all right, this seems awesome. <laughs> Let's see how it goes. And she has something in her hand, but it doesn't look like a gun. So I'm like, I'm willing to stay and see this through. Because, you know, if it's a gun, people, people get upset. They miss. Now she done shot me. I'm bleeding out. I'm not even part of your love. I'm laying there holding my wound. Y'all done worked it out. Like, this could all be for nothing. It's just she's holding something, but I can't see what it is, right? And as, as he's running down the stoop, she runs down with him. And she gets to this specific step. And then she goes like this, right? She goes like this, and then a piece of what she was holding flies out and hits him in the back, and he goes, <laughs> And then she lets go of the other thing that she was holding. It slides down the stairs, and when, when it slides down, it's close enough for me to see. And when I look, it was the sleeve of a hot pocket. woman to burn the hell out of this man with a hot pocket. <laughs> In the known universe, there are about four states of matter, right? There's gas, there's liquid, and there's solid. There's also plasma. Now, plasma can reach um, a temperature of about 45,000 degrees Fahrenheit. And just, just under that. Close, close second is hot pocket juice. Hot pocket juice must be studied. This will burn your soul. Hot pocket juice is far too hot. It is absolute insanity, okay? Because we've all been there. We've all been there where you were hungry, you heat up the hot pocket, that's gonna be quick, and then you went ahead and you put it higher than the instructions say, because you know when you follow the instructions, the middle cold. So then you put it at least two minutes higher than the instructions say because you got a different type of microwave. Your microwave doesn't work like the box says. And so you put an extra two minutes, but now we're into heated territory that no one, even the people at the company are aware of, right? And then you pull the hot pocket out, you hold it by the sleeve, and you, you, you wouldn't even be in this situation if you could just be a gentleman and wait, right? <laughs> But you're hungry, you're greedy, you can't help yourself. And so you blow, you do blow. You do, you give it a good try too. You blowing the bread. You're not doing anything for that juice inside. That juice is still bubbling like lava. Way to bust out. And so then you take your first bite and because you're hungry, because you're being greedy, you bite too hard, the juice pops out, it hits your lip and you go, ah! Thank you.
Now you coughing because steam coming out of your mouth because you got the corner bread in your mouth with all the juice burning everything. Burning teeth. Just burning. Inexplicably, just burning and burning and burning is terrible. This woman was running after this man. We don't know what he did. I didn't stay for an interview. This woman was running down the stairs after this man and had the Hot Pocket sleeve in her hand and reared back like an ancient weapon. Reared back. <laughs> and flung the Hot Pocket up, flung it like she had done it before. Like, she must be burning him weekly to have this sort of aim. If this was a game show, I could never sling it and hit what I wanted 